It started at some time after World War II, probably 47, 48. We were still segregated into the barrio, but this block was the first attempt at integrating it. There was a church, Catholic church. There was a pool hall called Chema's. There was all these cats and dogs running around. There was these houses there, and it was like something out of a John Steinbeck novel. The block was purchased in a tax sale by the Intercultural Council. I believe it was financed by the Pomona Valley Housing Authority, which then mortgage, gave individual mortgages to the home builders. I believe 12 houses built, and six of them went to white people and six of them went to Mexican families. We moved to Claremont in 1949. I was four and a half years old. We moved into this house that was built as a result of the Intercultural Council. I think the crutcher plan, as they call it, mostly was this flat roof, the plywood construction, the floor to ceiling windows, the transoms, single wall plywood, two bedrooms, one bath. I think possibly the Alvarez house might have been built with three bedrooms. I remember as a kid it was a little bit bigger. The houses were different sizes and different shapes and each one was designed specifically for the families that ended up purchasing the houses. There was two options. You could either elect to build a house yourself according to the plans provided by the ICC or you could have the ICC's contractor build a house for you. So they're long and rectangular. And on First Street and Blanchard, they are in, oriented north and south, back to back. And there was a grass area between, in between all the houses that was called the park. There were Mexicans and then there were Chris and, you know, other kids, the white children. But we all played together. It wasn't a quarter, it was just a field of grass bordered with paracantha bushes. A friend Roger's mother was involved with a, with a thing called the Club de Dallas. That came about from women who felt that there needed to be something going on with the community and the uh, Mexican-American women helping out. My mom and two of my aunts were trying to figure out a way to raise money for the Mexican baseball team who were named the ACs and they didn't have uniforms. So my mom's idea was to have a Jamaica in the church parking lot. The men would build like a wooden booth and then they would put palm fronds over the top and decorate it with paper, etc. And they thought, well, if we sell tacos and drinks and maybe some rice and beans or something else, we can make money to be able to buy the uniforms for the team. There was also the Well Baby Clinic. My mom was a, a big part of that too. In one of the pictures, it actually shows Dr. Wilcox and my mom and some other women from the body holding a baby. And what would happen is Dr. Wilcox would look at the children and check them out to be sure they were doing well, had their shots, and were well, not sick. And that was for a lot of the families that couldn't afford to take their kids to the doctor's office. What they would do is they would share their homes. So one month it would be at our house, another month it would be at someone else's house but he would go to the home and, and look at the babies to see if they were okay. The building boom in the 50s was in full swing by the time I was in elementary school, and many of the kids that I grew up with were also growing up in, in new houses. This is the barrio, but all the families here were homeowners. There was no projects here, no mean streets, you know, no apartments. It was all single family residence homeowners, even though we were Latino and we were pushed to this part of the extremities of town, like right by the county line. So we jumped the county line after World War II through the auspices of the ICC, and I went to, uh, you know, Sick Oakmont and Sycamore's integrated schools, whereas my, my mother went to segregated schools in Claremont. My father went to segregated schools in San Dimas. One of the things that was very interesting at that time is that a lot of the Chicano community was trying to assimilate in those days. Like in the 60s when La Raza and all that stuff happened, or they went all in the other direction. But in those days, it was uh, about assimilation, and about letting, let's see how we can all work together. As your fortunes improved in the late 50s, early 60s, you were chasing the American dream. That was a bigger car, bigger house, a nicer neighborhood. And the philosophy then for Mexican Americans was to assimilate and don't learn Spanish. My parents never taught me Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. I'm an American. 
we became acculturated, you know, that was just the theme. I think the concept that the Intercultural Council had of bringing interracial families together was a good idea and their intentions were good. Pretty much the children just got to know one another on the weekends and then after school. But as far as the families really getting together to spend time together, to get to know one another, I don't think that really happened. You know, the crazy thing is even today, I think things are really a lot the same. The intentions are good to have everyone get along together and do things together and love your neighbor and love everyone of different races, but everyone has their own, you know, their own prejudices, their own biases, their own... Maybe it's not as out there as it used to be, but it's still there. What it did for me as a person is that it made me aware that culture is culture and people are people and it doesn't matter where they're from or who they are, they're great people and I've met some of the best people that I've ever met living in this, in this community who came from a different cultural background than me and I got a chance to find out about a culture that I would probably not have known about had I not been living there.